Welcome to part five of the Brick Breaker tutorial. Um, just to refresh your memory at this point, we have a ball moving around the screen and it's doing lots of damage because we haven't told the bricks to go, uh, or we haven't told the ball to bounce off the bricks yet, so it just kind of goes through all of them. So uh, let's start there. Let's make the ball uh, bounce off the bricks. So to do that, I'm going to go into the ball class. And right here, I have code that says, if you hit the brick, then remove the brick from the world. However, that's all it does. It just removes the brick and it just keeps going. So we want to steal this little bit of code here and make it bounce in the vertical direction. So if we hit the brick, we're going to give multiple instructions. We're going to say bounce vertically. And we do that by running that command right there. And also remove the brick. So if I do that, just that one little change, and now you can see that it's bouncing off of the bricks. Fantastic. Now, the other thing we want to do is we want to add more bricks. And we do that in the My World area. And if you were going to copy that and then paste it and change, say, that value right there to a 40, that would work. But it's not the most efficient way. Um, the best way to do this is to recognize that this here, this code that I've highlighted, that will put eight bricks on the screen. And if I want to do that multiple times, I can actually take that code and cut it and put it inside of a loop. So it's a, a little trick where we put a loop inside of a loop. Now we're going to get an error here because you can't use X twice inside the loop. So we're going to put this as Y, which is good because this outside loop here controls the height. So if I want five rows of eight bricks, this code here will work. The only problem is it looks like one line because I still haven't spaced them out vertically yet. So I need to do that. There are multiple bricks on top of each other. My code worked, but what I didn't do is tell them to space out vertically. Right now they're all at 20. So if I put 20 times y, watch what's going to happen. There we go. Now they're spacing out. Problem is they're a little too high because they're starting at 0. But if I change that y coordinate to say 20 plus 20 times y, that means there's going to be a little bit of a spacing at the top, maybe a little bit too much. So maybe I change that 20 to a 10. Nope, oh, a little too little. See, it got to be perfect. There we go. Let's try 15. Okay, that's not bad. And now I get all these bricks appearing at the top of the screen. And if I don't want them touching each other, again, I can go back into my world and play with that spacing value just a little bit more. Maybe I go 22, and there's a little bit of spacing. But what I want you to recognize is that in here, these values are my spacing values. And this is kind of like, these values are my offset values. So in terms of vertical, my bricks start 15 pixels from the top and they're spaced out 22 pixels each. And horizontally, my bricks start 38 pixels from the right, or sorry, from the left wall and they're spaced out 75 pixels each. Okay? So now we have a pretty good brick breaker game where we can hit the ball and it's going to go and hit the bricks and they behave pretty appropriately and that's wonderful. Um, now what I want to do is introduce the concept of score and lives. So when we started Brick Breaker, we made the ball and we made the brick and we made the paddle. And the way we did that is we right clicked on actor and we went to new subclass and, you know, we chose a picture. But there are some nice people at Greenfoot who have made some classes for us. And one thing I can do is I can import a class that's already been made. So one class that's been made is called the counter. And the counter allows you to display a numerical value on the screen. So I'm going to import my counter. Oops. There we go. And you can see the counter appears over here. Counter is just like an actor. I can put it on the screen. And it has an image associated with it already. If I hit shift, I can actually see that's what the counter is going to look like. Now I'm going to go back to my world. And I'm going to want a counter that counts the score. 
So I'm going to put counter score equals new counter. And notice I put this beneath the class definition, but above the constructor. So this is me telling the computer that I want it to make a counter. I want to refer to it as score, but I'm not putting it on the screen yet. Notice that if I click here, there's no counter on the screen yet. The only time it shows up on the screen is when I actually tell it to by doing one of these things, where I type add object, and then I put it on the screen. Now in this case, I'm not going to put new counter here because I already made the counter up here. I called it score. So this one has a name called score because I'm going to need to reference it in other times. I'm, that's the only way I can add to it is if I, could, if I can reference it at other points in the program. And I want to add the score. Um, let's put it, let's put it down. You can see it appears now. I want to put it down here. So maybe 50 pixels over and pretty low, like maybe 380 down. So let's try that. Uh, 50 and 380. And there we go. Now we have a, a score counter in the bottom left of our screen. I could probably tuck it in a little bit better, but that's not too bad. And what I want to happen is when I hit a brick, I want that to go up by 10. Okay, so I'm going to go to my ball code, and I know where it hits a brick. It's right here. So if the ball hits a brick, the ball will bounce vertically, the brick will disappear, and now here is where I want to add score. So I want to add 10, oops, 10 to the score. So I want to detect the score, the counter, and add to it. So I called it score, right? So I, I should be able to go score and then if I hit dot, I should see all the things I can do with score. So I hit dot, and then I hit control space, and it gives me nothing. So there's a problem. It's not getting score. And the reason is because it looks for, remember, we're in the ball class. It's going to look in the ball class for a score variable. And there is none in here. So we have to tell it that score lives in my world. So to do it properly, we go my world dot score okay and this tells the computer that we want to access the score variable or the score counter but it lives in my world now if we go to my world you can see there it is but this still isn't going to work and you can see there's errors and the reason is because i have to put a couple of keywords right in front of counter i have to put public static and these words essentially allow other classes like ball to access the score variable. If you don't have those, it's not going to work. So now if I go back to ball and I type a dot right here and hit control space, you can see that it recognizes, oh yeah, there's a score counter on my world. And here are all the things you can do with the score counter. So I want to add 10 to the score counter every time it hits a brick. And you can see here, I run it now, and every time it hits a brick, we are adding 10 to the score. Okay, wonderful. Now, I can use multiple counters in my game. So I've added a score counter. Another thing I might want to add is a lives counter. So I'm going to copy and paste pretty much everything I've done here. I'm going to copy this, paste it, and say, well, I'm going to make another counter, but this one is going to be called lives. And I'm going to add it to the screen as well. So I'm going to add lives to the screen, the counter that I made up here. But I'm going to add this one on the other side of the screen. So maybe far, oh, not far enough. I meant 550. So I'm going to add it to the other side of the screen. And we're going to want lives to go down. So you might be thinking, well, how do you make it go down when all we have is add? And the answer is, we're going to just add negative 1. So we find the area where the ball disappears. So here is the code where if the y-coordinate of the ball gets too big, that means it's going to fall off the bottom of the screen, the ball gets removed, and now we're going to take away one 
from lives. So we go my world dot lives dot add minus one. So now if the ball falls through, oh, I'm too good. There we go. Minus one. Now we have an issue. Um, first of all, you know, we don't want just one life. We want three lives and the ball's going away and never coming back. That's a problem. We'll fix it later. Uh, and also if I hit reset, notice it's still at 20 for the score and negative one for the lives. So the way I can fix that is I go into the my world constructor and right after I add, this is what happens every single time the world is created. So every time I click reset, this code gets executed. So I add the score counter, I add the lives counter, but what I want to do is say right away score dot set value and I want to set the score to zero. And I want to set the lives and I can hit control space here too as well. And you can see all the things I can do with a counter. I want to set the lives counter to positive three. And now you can see zero, three. If I run it, then lives go down to two. If I reset, they go back. So I'll have to figure out how to bring that ball back and actually give the user three lives. But now we have the score working, we have lives working, we have lots of bricks up in the sky to hit. Our game is coming along.